there! It is so good to see you today. Hey! I'm up here! Welcome to Bible Blast. I'm Miss Heather, and today we're going to talk about faith. What does faith mean to you? Well, let's talk a little more about it. Heather, Heather, I need your help. I need your help. What is it? I need you to help solve a mystery for me. Right now? Yes, come on, let's go. Look at the daffodil. What? It's moving. What are you talking about? It's moving. There's nothing around it. There's nothing over it. There's no strings or anything causing it to move, but it's moving. Are you serious? Yes. It's the wind. See, the wind is causing the daffodil to move. I don't see any wind. What are you talking about? You can't see wind, but you can see the effects of wind all around you. Huh. It's kind of like our faith in God. We can't see God, but we see the effects of God in the world around us. Ah, that makes sense. The wind is moving the daffodil. Hi, fifth and sixth graders. This is Mrs. Brandt. I was scheduled to teach uh, Sunday school this spring, and you may remember me from Wednesday nights from this past winter. I wanted to share something today with you about faith. Faith is something that you can't necessarily see, right? Um, especially during these times, we need to have a little bit of faith that things are gonna be okay. So this is from a devotional that my family has done. It's the dinner table devotional. And it's entitled, Believing Without Seeing. I'm gonna read it and then there'll be some questions at the end that maybe you can discuss with your families. And I'm thinking I'm gonna see if I can get Leo to answer these questions for me. Some people say they'll only believe something if they can prove it or if they can see it with their own eyes. If they can't see it, touch it, hear it, or prove it some other way, they won't believe. Did you know that Jesus is understanding when it comes to people who have a hard time in believing what they can't see? He showed us that when we, he was willing to give proof to his disciple Thomas. Thomas said he wouldn't believe that Jesus had risen from the dead unless he touched Jesus' hands where the nails had been and Jesus' side where the spear had wounded him. When Jesus appeared to Thomas, he said, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand in the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer, believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus responded that those who believe without seeing him are blessed. Jesus knew a time was coming when all who believed in him would do so without the benefit of seeing him with their eyes or touching them with their hands. So he gives us the gift of faith. Faith gives us the confidence to believe in Jesus, even though we've never seen him with our physical eyes. I'll be back with some questions. Okay, I've got Leo. He has gone over the devotion and I have some questions for you, Leo. Say hi. Hi. All right. Can you think of anything you believe in that you've never seen with your eyes? Um, radio waves or like internet, your phone. Yeah. How about love? Do you, is that something that you can see? No. But do you believe in it? Yes. Um, or the law of gravity, is that something you can see? No. Well, I mean. Not really. See it happen. Right. And what about God? Do you see God? No. But do you believe in it? Yes. Him? All right. What do you think Jesus meant when he said that those who believe without seeing are blessed? Uh, I think he meant that he, he needs hope. And, and if you have hope, that's a good thing to 
have. You're blessed if you have hope. And how would you have expected Jesus to respond to Thomas's request for proof? You would just say like believe, or just like tell him just to believe. But he actually showed him what happened. Right. To him. And how does it make you feel to know that Jesus responded this way? He means he understands us. He gets what we're going through and what's happening right now. And he knows that some people need proof to believe in something. Here we go, Leo. All right. Thank you. Bye. Hey, everybody. My name is Miss Melissa, and I'm going to read you The Wind That Obeyed. Come, said Jesus. Get into the boat. Let's go for a ride. Jesus got into the boat. Jesus' friends got into the boat. Splash went the little waves. Splash, splash. Jesus' friends began to make the boat go. Pull, push, pull, push. But Jesus was tired. He laid down in the back of the boat and went to sleep. Now, while the boat was going, the wind started to blow. It blew the men's hairs. It blew the cl their clothes. It blew the water. Soon, the little boat was rolling up and down and up and down. Then some water came into the boat. Splash! went the big waves. Splash! Splash! Jesus' friends were wet. They were afraid too. Let's tell Jesus, they said. Save us, Lord. Wake up, wake up. Jesus opened his eyes. He saw the water splash. He heard the wind blow, but he said, why are you afraid? I'm here. Then Jesus talked to the wind. He talked to the water. He said, shh, be still. And do you know what happened? The wind stopped blowing. The water stopped splashing. They both got still as still could be. Jesus' friends looked around. Everything was quiet and safe. Who is Jesus, they said. Even the wind and the water do what he says. I know who Jesus is. Do you? Jesus made the wind. Jesus made the water. Jesus is God. Have a great day, everyone. Be safe and healthy. There's a sea, there's a sea, there's a sea of Galilee, and there's a boat in the sea of Galilee, there's a boat in the sea of Galilee, there's a boat, there's a boat, there's a boat in the sea of Galilee, and there are men in the boat in the sea of Galilee, there are men in the boat in the sea of Galilee. There are men, there are men, there are men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. And there are hands on the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are hands on the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are hands, there are hands, there are hands on the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. Remember what comes next? What do they have in their hands? And there are nets in the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are nets in the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are nets, there are nets, there are nets in the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. Okay, what comes next? What is in the nets? That's right, fish. See your fish. And there are fish in the nets of the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are fish in the nets of the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are fish, there are fish, there are fish in the nets of the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. All right, what do the fish use to breathe underwater? You remember that part? Yeah, they got their gills right here. They got their gills. Okay, you ready? And there are gills on the fish in the nets of the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. 
There are gills and the fish in the nets of the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are gills, there are gills, there are gills and the fish of the nets of the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. All right, we got through it, but I think we can go faster. So you ready? And there are gills and the fish of the nets, the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are gills and the fish of the nets, the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are gills, there are gills, there are gills and the fish of the nets, the hands of the men in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. All right, can we do a little bit faster? All right, here we go. And there are Gills and the fish of the nets of the hands of the man in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are gills and the fish of the nets of the hands of the man in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are gills, there are gills, there are gills and the fish of the nets of the hands of the man in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. All right, here we go. All right, I can hear you. I can hear you all the way through the phone and your computer all the way back over here. I can hear you. So let's see if we can do it really, really fast this time. Okay? Okay, don't start without me. Here we go. And... There are. Don't start yet. Gills and the fish and that's a handsome man in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are gills and the fish and that's a handsome man in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. There are gills. There are gills. There are gills and the fish and that's a handsome man in the boat in the Sea of Galilee. It's kind of part snack, part craft. And you can use whatever you can find in your refrigerator. Just make sure you ask your parents first. Don't just go rummaging through your refrigerator. And if you need to cut anything, make sure you ask your parents first, okay? So what we found in our refrigerator, um, we have some tomatoes, some grapes, some oranges, celery. We have some marshmallows, some blueberries. Um, and some vegetable spread and as you saw at the beginning of this video my little masterpiece here um, I made it out of a cantaloupe and I made the hair out of tortillas which I just cut with kitchen scissors and I have marshmallows and blueberries for the eyes a tomato for the nose and a tomato for the tongue and then Brody and I were working on this little guy out of an avocado. And we have marshmallow eyes and a little tomato tongue. And I was just about to add a nose. And we've been using toothpicks to hold everything together. And for this, I broke the toothpick in half. That way it doesn't stick out so far. And I'm just gonna put that right there in the middle of his face. And then I'm using half of a green grape for his nose. So I'll just slide that right on top of the toothpick. And there's the little avocado guy. Now Brody was working on a butterfly and we have already gotten started. We sliced some oranges for the wings and a little piece of celery for the body. So he is going to add some vegetable spread right down the center of the piece of celery. And the vegetable spread is kind of like using edible glue. It'll help us stick the other parts to the celery. And you could use yogurt or peanut butter or something like that instead of vegetable spread. Okay, that looks good. So now he's gonna add the little slivers of tomato for the antennae. And he's gonna pick out three little tomatoes for the body. And he could use grapes if he wanted to or blueberries that he's using nice red tomatoes. So here is our finished butterfly. And you can get creative and make whatever you want. You could even make some kind of abstract 
sculpture. So this is kind of fun. It's a stack that you... <laughs> it's a craft that's kind of like a snack that you can eat. <laughs> some sort of abstract sculpture with fruit and vegetables and you could put it together with toothpicks and yogurt or peanut butter or vegetable spread but it's just a fun craft <laughs> that you can do <laughs> and you can eat it when you're done <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Bible Blast. Hope you had a blast!